Hello, it's Omaji. I just wanted to take a moment. There was some guidance that kind of came through this morning. This often happens when I'm on social media and I'll see a post that goes by that's a little bit from separation consciousness or codependent ways of being. The, the guidance, the wisdom within me will step forward and or my guides will share Actually, it's this way, like tweaking it into integrity with oneness. And so today when I was on social media this morning, there was a post that, that had something to do with healing someone else. Like when you heal someone else, da, da, da. And I was like, ooh, that feels out of integrity. So I just leaned in, checked in. And that it's like, it came forward. You never really heal anyone else. They heal themselves. They actually heal themselves. So it's almost like the assumption of that quote or that sharing, the foundation of it, the energy it was coming from was an assumption of separation. That somehow healing exists outside of us. And we have to get it from an external someone or something. And so a lot of times when people call me a healer, I don't really identify that way. Unless you define it as someone who supports others in remembering how to heal themselves. Someone who heals themselves. In that respect, I'm a healer. I work on myself all the time. But we really can't give healing away. And this is one of the misperceptions in separation consciousness that we're just many of us on the front of the bridge getting ready to cross. It's like, ooh, I'm just kind of getting this idea that I can't really heal anyone but myself. So I'm not saying it's right, wrong, good, or bad to identify as a healer. What this is, is intended to be an invitation into the next level of what that actually is and how we can be that um, energy of a healer, demonstrate healing from the highest possible perspective, from oneness, from truth, that inspires others to step into the seat of them being a healer for themselves. Doesn't mean you can't support facilitating healing for others, but there's a difference because in the, in the, in the idea that I could possibly be someone to heal someone else, I actually have taken now, if I believe that, and I'm functioning from that paradigm, actually take the responsibility for healing them and I hold it and that's very discordant it's out of integrity with the divine design because the divine design oneness intends for every aspect of oneness to hold the responsibility for its own healing at the level of its higher self and then it will call to it exactly what it needs We'll be in the flow of every single step of it discovering, uncovering, expanding, remembering, activating. So this is an invitation into maybe we need a new language, how we language talking about healing. From my perspective, healing is actually just remembering. remembering who you are in truth and as you remember more and more of who you are in truth as one with an infinite source the healing quote unquote the external the reflection of the healing happens things can show up out here to facilitate the manifestation of a physical mental or emotional healing but it happened first within your own consciousness you activated it you made the way Nothing outside of you is making the way for you. You're making your own way. 
and it's beautiful and it's organic and it's synchronistic and it's lovely and it's empowering. And that's probably the exclamation point here is this is all about coming from paradigms that are empowering, that never take power away from another, that never say to another, you're not capable of healing yourself here, let me do it for you. That is not where we're going. And of course we don't do that deliberately, but unconsciously, energetically, when we decide we're the one that's responsible for healing another, we take some of their power and try to hold it for them. We see them as not capable of doing it for themselves on some level. Again, it may be unconscious. That's the journey is to bring all of these unconscious patterns to conscious awareness so we can begin to really make sure I'm choosing what I wish to choose, that I'm in integrity with the divine design, that I'm in integrity with what it actually is to be a healer in, tr in, a, in a coherent way, from a place of truth, from a place of honoring, from a place of empowerment. And so this is an invitation into that place and that space that's maybe beyond a current level of expression of you as a healer, where you can begin to ask, I wonder what it would take for me to become aware of how I could use and utilize my gifts that I've honed as a healer in a way that's even more empowering. And that functions from the paradigms of oneness and truth, where every single aspect of life is responsible for healing itself. And I can be a catalyst, I can be a guide, I can be a way shower, I can be a facilitator, but I'm not holding energetic responsibility for them being healed. I'm letting them hold that for themselves and want that for themselves. I'm not gonna want it for them either because that's actually part of the codependent tendency is to want for them which is energetically equivalent to trying to choose for another. Because maybe it's not time for them. Maybe that's not the step they're on. We can't possibly know their journey. We can't possibly know what they're ready for. So we let others want for themselves. Can we show you how to do that? Can we show you how to hold a space for their healing in a way that's empowering, that's encouraging, that comes from your wisdom, your mastery, and sovereignty, first and foremost. This idea of free will. Is expressed in the wanting. Wanting is a choice. And if we want for another, it's equivalent to trying to choose for them. It's a desire energy. That literally, energetically, when we want for another, we place on them. And that's the codependency, the separation consciousness that we're actually in the midst of graduating out of. So if you may have done that in the past, you can invite your higher self, body, Davis, higher self, and teams to work with the energetic fields and the guides to retrieve all your wanting energy off of everyone and everything you've ever wanted for. Wanting them to be more inspired, more healthy, more empowered, more free, more loved. Wanting them to love themselves more. Wanting them to see from a different perspective. Maybe it's not time for that for them. Taking a moment to fire yourself from being the source from it, for anyone else. Letting them be the source for themselves wanting for their own freedom, their own wisdom, their own empowerment, their own joy, their own healing. Because if they want it for themselves, they'll do it. They'll move in that direction. But if we try to want for them, we convolute and distort that pure direct line to source that they have organically. So Take a moment to invite your higher self to retrieve all the energetic fabric of wanting and desire you placed on anyone or anything, clean it, recalibrate it, reweave it in your own energetic fields. Use it on you for you, only want for you. Then you demonstrate 
the appropriate use of desire from a place of sovereignty, from a place of love, from a place of empowerment. And you are abiding by the law of free will, only wanting for you because you can only choose for you. We never try to choose for another because that's out of integrity. Deep breath in, inviting a balancing and stabilizing of all your energetic fields, updating all grids, all reference points, all ways in which you perceive and are perceived, updating your identity grids. And if you choose, you can invite your higher self to upgrade the grids you're using as a healer out of the paradigms, even as a healer of self, they're saying out of the paradigms of separation into bringing in the new grids that function from sovereignty, that function from oneness, that function from the integrity of free will, only wanting, choosing for you, only using your healing energy on you for you, showing others how to fish, knowing they have everything within them necessary to do it for themselves to activate those same energetic wellsprings within themselves of healing, transformation, remembering. Good. Update all grids, all reference points. Syncing up with the now getting current with who you are now. And you're encouraged to continue to ponder this idea of, I would never want for another. I would never try to choose for another because it's the same thing. And I would never take responsibility for another. So if you have energetically taken responsibility for another, probably unconsciously, for their healing, for their happiness, for their joy, for their freedom, Inviting you at the level of your higher self, body Davis, higher self, and teams to work with the energetic fields and the guys to return all that responsibility back to them, where they have the capacity to receive it at the level of their higher selves, along with all relevant and appropriate energetic information, all empathic sensations. Deep breath in. And one last piece here that has to do since we're talking about healers and healing, for many of you that are very empathic, it may have eluded you up to this point on a conscious level, the information that when you empathically feel someone else, even if it's a group, it's because you have energetic information that would benefit them. That's all it means. So you can invite your higher self, body Davis, higher self and teams to send all the energetic information you have to their higher self, body Davis, higher self and teams in the appropriate dimension, time spiral continuum where they have the capacity to receive it. Just intend to send all the information you have like you would send an email. Your higher self knows what that is. Return all empathic sensations back to them, all responsibility for any of those bundles back to them, because again, they're the healer for themselves. We can't really heal another. It's out of integrity to do that. That's fuel for their evolution. Give it back. And then update all grids, all reference points. You will find if you do this process, Every day for the next 90 days, even 30 days, you will notice a massive difference in the level of your empathic reactivity. You will still probably feel collective and other people's stuff, but it, when you do this process, because again, it's like a tap on the shoulder saying, oh, you have information for me, will you send it? That's all it is. And you're just aware that they're tapping you on the shoulder. So you could actually feel into 
the celebration that you're evolved enough, courageous enough, ready enough to be aware of when you have information for another. And share gratitude for your journey that you've evolved to such a degree that you can be of service in that way, in a conscious way. Most people that, that don't refer to themselves as empathic are simply not aware in a conscious way that they're being empathically impacted by others that they have information for. So being aware and conscious gives you the opportunity to send the information and to release the empathic sensations back to them. It's a gift for you and for them. It's a win-win. Because the people who are unconscious, not aware that they're being empathically impacted are just feeling heavy and they don't know, they think it's their stuff. Or they have anxiety. They think it's theirs. It's amplifying whatever it is within them that they're maybe working through, making it feel much more intense. So for my fellow empaths out there, encouraging you to move into a higher octave in relationship to your empathic, we'll call empathic sensitivity, what more accurately is empathic awareness and to celebrate it and to be grateful that you have the ability to then consciously know that you have information for someone else. You can invite your higher self, body's higher self to send it. It's important to do both because your body is also empathically feeling other body Davis that it has information for. And every single day I do this, every single day I send information to everyone I have information for. I invite my body, David, to do the same. Encouraging them to hold the responsibility for their own issues at the level of their higher selves, where they have capacity to work it. And it goes something like this. Like if I were to put it in a whole like conversation, energetically, someone tries to give me their bundle, thinking I can shift it for them. Oh, honey. I would never take that from you. That's fuel for your evolution. You need that. If I take this from you, you just have to go get more. You have the capacity to shift this for yourself. I know you can do it. You are fully empowered. You have everything within you to do it. You are connected. You're a whole in one with source. You have all the healing qualities within you to grow, shift, and evolve what this represents for you. I would never go out of integrity with the divine design and try to take your bundle and shift it for you because number one, I can't, it's not calibrated for me. And number two, it robs you of that fuel for your evolution that you maybe took lifetimes to gather this bundle and to get it ready. So I'm gonna gently give it back to you with compassion. And I'm gonna invite you to crank up your courage and to work it and to, if you choose in whatever dimension you want to. And that my friends is stepping into the mastery of sovereignty and functioning in accordance with the divine design of oneness. No one is ever given more than they have the capacity to shift for themselves. They're actually doing it for themselves. They've just forgotten. So you can remember and then remind them. You have everything within you. You're fully empowered to be able to shift this for you. And I wouldn't rob you of that leg of your journey in your evolution. In fact, if I keep your bundle, you just have to go get more and it takes you longer. So I'm going to stay in integrity with oneness. I'm going to let you hold this where you have the capacity to, the level of your higher self, to work it in your own divine timing. I'm not going to want for you to shift it. I'm going to let you want that for you. But I can hold safety for you. I can hold the knowing that you have everything within you required 
that you're fully empowered already, that you're already one and whole with source. And I can send you all the information I have that may support you if you choose to use it. I'm not attached to you using it. And I'm gonna demonstrate the solution, the oneness, sovereignty, the love, the compassion, the joy, the freedom, the empowerment. And you could equate this a little bit to if you have a personal trainer at the gym and if they tried to lift your weights for you, you wouldn't get any stronger. Sure, they can do it. Sure, they're good at it. They've been doing it a while. They're really good at lifting weights. But we, it's like us taking someone else's bundle and trying to shift it for them is like us taking their barbells and trying to lift it for them as their personal trainer and thinking that's helping them. That's the best analogy I've come up with. So let them have their barbells. You're a guide, you're a way shower. That is what I would kind of language as a new paradigm of healer. Yes, you're a healer for yourself and you're gonna demonstrate how to heal yourself. Everyone else energetically gets that information in a way they can receive it. You positively, empathically impact the collective. Everything speeds up and accelerates when we get in our own lane, stay in our own lane, and are only attached and responsible for our pieces. Doesn't mean we can't be a guide, doesn't mean we can't offer suggestions or information, but we're not gonna take responsibility for them doing it and we're not gonna try to do it for them because that's disempowering. Deep breath in, inviting this to integrate. You can bring this in in your own unique way, in a way that honors you. Balancing, stabilizing your energetic fields, recalibrating for a higher vibration, for a new paradigm, updating all grids, all reference points, all ways in which you perceive and are perceived. So honored and just love sharing in this way and I'm being reminded that we do have a, another energetic transmission coming up for the Lionsgate on 8-8, which is this Sunday. So feel free to join us. Love to have you. You can go to our website at embracingtheinfinite.com to learn more. Much love and many blessings. And the guides are saying it's called the Embodied Divine Light Transmission. Gateway, Lionsgate Transmission of Light. So that's how you'll find it. Much love to each of you, and we will connect again soon.